So now we're going to start modifying the colors. Starting with that second wristband. What you want to do is you go to, uh, well I like to just press command U and it'll give you the hue uh, selection. But you can also go to edit, tonal correction, and hue saturation. And as you can see it's changing right here. And I don't know why it's just changing half of it, it's weird. I must have been painting on the wrong layer somewhere. Yep. So what I did was I colored the second uh, wristband on, this, on the first wristband layer. And that can be easily fixed. Now you don't have to erase the first wristband, you know, this layer here. You can if you want. Turning it off will turn it orange, of course, because remember we have our silhouette layer turned on. So don't let that fool you. You can basically color in on the correct layer completely without having to erase the color underneath. Since this second wristband is on top, whatever you're painting on top will show. Alright, now we can begin to edit the colors. Starting with wristband 2 because it's been bugging me. I want it to be uh, warmer. So we make it warmer. And just slide around. Hue is, is going to slide around the color. You have to release so that you can see the color. In Photoshop, you won't have to release. You can just slide it around. Get the same option. And saturation means just how much um, how much color is inside the color, if that makes sense. Basically, if it's desaturated, there's less color and it turns gray. Completely unsaturated, it's just there's no color in it. So, the more color, the more vibrant, the more saturated. See? So we wanted to have it just semi-saturated. And also, Keep in mind, saturated objects stand out a lot more, so you want to organize you know, where you want it more saturated, where you want it less saturated, where you want it more warm, cool, just some general rules to follow when selecting colors. This is the lightest, the light, uh, the light luminosity, just how dark or light it is, aka values, and I like this value right here. I'm going to modify the other one. A little more saturated, a little bit darker. Like that. So I'm constantly thinking to balance it out. Not too many cools, on, so that the uh, warms and cools are not equally balanced. Which is part of color theory. You don't want them to be like you know half and half. You want to direct the eye using different colors. I think I'm gonna go desaturated. It's throwing me off. Shorts. Sliding around will give you a good idea of you know how it's gonna look. Some really light shorts really dark shorts. So I like the darker on light. It's, uh, it's a nice contrast against the skin. Uh, light on light is nice too, but you want to have, you know, you want to really, if you're going to go a direction, you kind of have to go all the way with it. And I would basically darken up the skin a, a bit to contrast with the shorts. As you can see, red works well with blue. And there are reasons why the color spectrum works this way. If I were to go purple, not so much. Not so much, see? Red is kind of boring, brown is, is warm, it's kind of uh, red on red, see? But blue, it's a nice contrast with the red. But it has to be semi on the green side for complementary colors. Again, I, I won't get into the color theory so much, just uh, loosely speaking. Red hair, red top, that's a nice uh, harmony there going. I'm going to be doing several color schemes actually. Um, so first of all, I like to keep the colors kind of standard, you know, like brown hair, blue pants, etc. Normal kind of uh, regular colors. And then I like to do like more crazy uh, color schemes. Just to keep it simple, you know, because keeping it simple so that you don't get overwhelmed with all the different options. Eyebrows and eyelashes should be a little bit darker. And I'm on the wrong layer, that's actually the uh, eye. Eye whites, eye whites, so we'll call it eye whites, EW. See here I'm trying to find her eyelashes. Turn off the lines. Alright, so her eyelashes are down here next to her hair and I didn't label it. Slowed me down for a bit. Browse. Alright, so after you've uh, picked all the colors that you're satisfied with, um, we're gonna do some sa shadows. Shadows. First thing we're gonna do is create a folder just underneath the lines. Let's 
see here? This is my secret technique, okay? I'm sure a lot of people do it. I just, this is what I discovered on my own. Things that I picked up along the way. Put everything inside that folder. So highlight everything, drag it in, close it. So create a new layer on top of that. For shadows, you can use um, colors that are around this area here and whatever temperature you like, actually. You can use purple, you can use red, you can use uh, baby blue, uh, whatever floats your boat. And again, we can also edit those shadow colors later. So let's just go with, let's just go with purple. Now, there's two ways you can do shadows. You can select the color, go to your color circle, push it down, and paint in the shadows like this. This would be a very painterly, painstaking approach. Uh, a lot of old school painters, and a lot of people still do it this way. I mean, um, if you got the time, do it. It'll come up really nicely if you understand how to control temperature, temperature at, at the same time you're doing color. It, it works really nicely. Another way you can do it is what I was initially going to do, selecting that purple, uh, turning your layer to multiply, and coloring it in. See? Now it's your shadow. That's too dark for me. Paint on the side what color you want. So figure out what you want there, there, and you think about it, hmm, is that too dark? Is that too light? But make sure you have it on the side so that you can select it later. I think I found something I like there. Yeah, that's nice. So what I do is I like to take that color, I go to my color set, and then we save that color right here by clicking this button. And it gets placed right there. If I click it again, it keeps making it, and that's my shadow. You can paint it on the side and it makes it easier to select. You can put them over here, it's fine. But the reason why on the side it won't work on this case, unless you keep it on a separate layer, we want to have it on this layer. So but what we're going to do now is basically click this button and you'll see this red line to pop up right here. And what that does is whatever you're coloring on this layer will only affect whatever is underneath it. Okay? And this is what happens. It's kind of like the locking transparent button, but that only draws on whatever you, you painted on previously. But since this layer doesn't have anything, uh, that, would, that wouldn't work. So if I clicked on it, and I, there's nothing there, so there's nothing to paint on top of. Click on this, it paints on everything underneath it that's already been previously painted on, okay? Now how does that work where it paints on all these colors at the same time? because we put everything in this folder here. So it paints on everything that's been previously painted on within that folder. Now, to give you an example, if I had the shorts outside of that folder, it'll only correspond to the shorts and nothing in the folder. So this is what that red, red line represents. So if I went over here, there's nothing. Ah, uh, shorts. Ah, I see the shorts. Okay, shorts. So this is why it's important to keep everything inside your folder. Folder, all the colors inside the folder. Close your folder. Turn this button on. And voila, like magic. Here in Photoshop land, you want to create a new layer. And then hold on to option. And right above the layer you want to affect, you'll see this box pop up. And you click it. And it'll do the same effect as uh, it does in Manga Studio. So I'm just going to start blocking in some shadows, keeping it kind of a uh, general, general kind of lane. I'm trying to figure out what the light is, uh, keeping your uh, paintbrush bigger like this on this size. It'll really speed up your drawing. And we'll do the little crevices later like this after we've uh, finished blocking in the bigger shapes, okay? So I'm going to speed it up now, and I'll see you when I'm done. And again, my shadow is on the latter side because it's on the multiply uh, setting. If it was darker like um, this here, and I were to multiply, it comes out really dark because it's, it's, it's overlapping and multiplying whatever color that's underneath it. Okay. So we want to have like a lighter color like that.
so after you got all their bigger shapes out of the way, we can begin drawing in the uh, shading in the smaller uh, areas. Yes. Also, I'm constantly pressing the uh, undo button if I don't like it. Just press Command Z and that'll undo it. And to do multiple un undos, you just keep pressing Command Z. And to redo is holding on Command, Shift and Z, and you get it back. So once you're done with the shadows, you guys can begin uh, modifying the shadows by erasing them out. But first, actually, let me show you what happens when I turn off the uh, that uh, I don't know what it's called. It's the clip at layer below. So the clip layer. If I turn off the clip layer, this is what happens. You'll see all the stuff that I you know that bleeds outside. You turn it on, and it affects what's underneath. Alright, so once you've completed um, doing all your shadows, we are going to erase out the shadows using a semi-smaller brush. I'm just erasing out areas and cleaning up parts here and there. Going back and forth, you can add shadows, remove shadows. We're always thinking about, you know, ways to simplify first and then modify later. Really helps speed up your work and make it a lot less overwhelming. Like how I decide to choose, you know, basic colors first and worry about the colors later, you know, because we can modify it later. We're not uh, distracted with all those, you know, crazy funky colors because there are a ton of different, you know, selections you can choose from. But but you want to deal with one thing at a time. How do you eat uh, an, an elephant? And the answer would be um, one piece at a time. Right? That's the only way. You don't eat the whole thing. If you're going to eat an elephant, it's a big elephant. And the only way to get it done is one piece at a time. A lot of times people are discouraged from drawing because, you know, they, they start drawing the hard stuff first and they were never explained that, you know, or they never figured out a simpler way to, to, of, of, you know, of breaking it down and starting from the easier part first. That's all it is. Drawing is an art of finding ways to simplify things, figuring out ways to, uh, to solve the problem in the easiest way possible. And I've modified my hotkeys so that they're closer together so that I don't have to keep looking down and uh, selecting my hotkeys. And I'm using the pen tool to fill in these colors because it's a nice solid uh, color. It's not transparent. It doesn't it doesn't fade. This is for a more uh, graphic 2D stylized approach. <laughs> 